Hello, and welcome to episode 33 of the Indie String Podcast. I'm your host, Kay, also known as Indie String on Ravelry. Thank you for all the returning viewers, and welcome to any new viewers. Thank you so much for giving me a shot. So I have here with me today um, Maya, who is my dog. You can just see her head right here. I'm sure she'll make an appearance later. Uh, if she gets down from my lap, I'll have to stop recording because I'm on wood floors, and you can hear her nails, and it's highly annoying. So this is about take three. And let's see if it works out for us. So my wine Reiner is seven. Uh, I've had her since she was a puppy. She's the dog that I picked out and I wanted. I did show my husband's dog the Brittany Spaniel a few months ago. Yeah, several months ago. And um, she is what we call our puppy. She's only two years old. So hopefully in the next few years she'll start to really settle down. Um, I keep on getting told my Weimariner will settle down, but she's seven and she still hasn't. So hopefully she starts going a little bit slower. Um, but she's a little neurotic and she needs to be by me. Usually I put her outside or in a kennel, but today it's not very nice outside. So um, we're going to try to record with her in here. All right, so I have been getting some PMs from some new viewers. Thank you so much for contacting me. I love to hear from you guys. So I'm going to go through the administrati. I don't do it every week because I kind of feel like it's redundant. But for any of the new people, I don't know if you know what's going on. So the first thing that we have going on is a kale. It's called Christmas in July kale. Um, all my kales run for two months. So this is for June and July. And we'll have three giveaways. I'm still trying to decide what yarn I want to give away. But we'll have a pattern giveaway and a bag as well, a knitting bag. But that's being made right now. So once I get that, I'll show you guys. It's so cute. I want it. And all that you have to do to participate in that is be a member of the Ravelry group and post an FO in the thread. The only rule is, is that it has to be a gift. So you can spin this any way you want. You can make a gift for yourself. So just go ahead and tell me who the gift is for. Um, and really, anything you make in the months of June and July will be eligible for this kale. Um, just you know, say it's a gift for you or really get started on your Christmas knitting. Because for me, I totally need a jump start on my Christmas knitting. Uh, I try to keep my list to under 10. Uh, and so... But still, 10 knitted gifts. Again, it froze on me. Okay, I'm going to see how this goes. It might, for some reason, camera is freezing on me, so I'll try to work through it. Um, so that's one thing that's going on. The second thing that's going on is that I have giveaways for reviews. So um, the current giveaway I have is if you leave an iTunes review or star rating, PM me, and I'll put you on a list. And for those people, once I get up to 10 people who did that, um, I will be giving away this skein of hand spun. I spun this. It's merino, superwash merino and silk, and it's pigeon roof. It's about 200 yards of a worsted weight, and I do really love it. Whoever gets it will love it as well, I'm sure. So I'm up to about eight people. So only two more people need to do it, and we'll have that giveaway. Alrighty, so let's get into what I've been knitting this week. Um, I have been knitting the curtain call pop cowl um, for the cow that we have going on in the group and I've been knitting that out of in a verb for keeping warm in their alpaca silk blend I think I have the tag somewhere if I can find it oh well you guys will have to try to remember um, and this is what it looks like so I got lots of ends don't I it is completely done last week it was pretty much done um, I went ahead and finished the section. All I have to do is Kitchener stitch it. Uh, before I Kitchener stitch, I always block um, it flat for two reasons. One, I find it's easier to Kitchener stitch or really do any kind of finishing after the piece is blocked. And the second is that I don't really enjoy blocking circular cowls. It is only because I'm lazy, so I'll be honest. And when you block something that's circular like that, you really should move it um, multiple times through the blocking, blocking process so it doesn't get like a crease in it from where the end um, was folded over and it dried. So instead of doing that, all I do is I go ahead and I block it before, still on the needles, and then I'll join it up. 
I actually forgot. I thought I had joined it. I had been thinking about doing it several times, and then I went to go get all the stuff for recording this week, and I noticed that I hadn't done it yet. But it's beautiful and lovely, and I'm sure um, someone is going to enjoy it. So I'm excited about that. I don't know what it's going to be for yet. Sometimes I knit like that. We'll see. Um, my husband has several people that he wants me to knit for this Christmas, so it'll probably be for one of his friends or one of our work acquaintances, I guess. So I have a few people in mind that would really enjoy it. So that's going. Hopefully next week we'll have a FO for you guys. And because that was almost done and it was blocking, I had to have something to knit on. So I started the second entry into the Christmas in July. I started the, excuse me, Bees to Honey Shawl by Amy Miller. I'm knitting this out of hazelnuts in the Artisan Sock in the colorway Bloom and Portobello. I've shown you guys those a few times, so shouldn't be no surprise. So this is how far I am. So let's talk about this, this shawl. It's super, super easy. It's a great beginner shawl. Um, I think it, it's really enough to kind of almost be brain dead, especially if you've been knitting for a while. And then the lace section is um, true lace, so lace on both sides. But it's more daunting than it is. I guess it sounds more daunting than it really is. It's actually not very difficult. So <clears throat> I have the entire solid section done, which is seven, um, seven repeats. And you're going to have seven sections of this gray. And I have started the lace section. I'm only two rows into it. I have over 350 stitches on the needles right now. So that is the start of my lace. It basically doesn't look like anything right now. And I think someone's here, so I'm going to stop for just a minute. Sorry about that. I'm back. So we're talking about this shawl. Um, it is, <clears throat> from this point forward, it's only going to be this peachy pink colorway called Bloom. And that will finish out the shawl. So I had 400 yards per skein to start out with, and this is all that I have left of the gray colorway called Portobello. And as comparison, this is how much still I have on the pink lemonade. I would say that I probably knit 400 yards this week, which is, seems to always be my average of what I can get done, about 400 yards. So I'm hoping by next week I have this done and bound off. I don't know if I'll have it blocked, but I should start... It again when I looked at the chart the only complaint I have about this pattern is that the chart doesn't have use universal symbols and that drives me crazy I wish that all charts use the same symbols so it wasn't like I was continually relearning what they mean and I could just look at it and go um, and so this uses a different format for the symbols, which is kind of confusing me. I'm, I'm really cautious. Of course, I've only knit two rows. So really, I'm just in the beginning. And it seems as though it's going to be easily memorizable. It is only, I believe, 16 rows. And I think it's the same two rows repeated again and again. But the only things that's changed is you're increasing here at the center point and you're increasing on each end so every right sided row you're increasing four and what basically changes in the chart is not the main two rows of the lace pattern but it is how to get enough stitches at this point to start another repeat of the it's like a four repeat section of the lace and so I really think it's just the same two rows over and over again. And before long, within probably six rows, I'll have it memorized. That's the hope anyways. And then I can just go super, super fast, right? And then that will be another great present. Uh, I'm really happy with it. I really, really like it. The colors are working up much nicer together than I thought. And it will be a, quite a large shawl for somebody. And so that's another present. See, it's already motivating me. 
And I am being pretty monogamous on my knitting. I mean, I'm picking up something and I'm trying to knit all the way through. I seem to go much quicker with that and have a lot more success in keeping with my projects when I'm monogamous. When I kind of start to split my attention and I have two or three projects, it seems as though I have a tendency to put one down and not finish it. And then I got that really big, you know, unfinished UFO bin that I'm still trying to get all the way through. So I think I'm really going to try to to fin pick it up and finish a project. I think most of my steam is within two or three weeks of starting a project. So as long as I'm still knitting four to 500 yards a week, for me, really, that's most projects. I mean, a sweater for me is 1,200 plus yards, so a sweater would take me like three weeks. Yikes. And that would be really boring for you guys, especially if it's the only thing I'm knitting. It's just me by myself here. Oh, refocus, please. There we go. All right, so what am I getting it next? If I have time this week, I am going to cast on for another project after I get down um, the lace section and I bind off of that. I am looking to cast on Dunes by Rose Beck, and it's this beautiful shawl. Sorry, it's in black and white. I bought this pattern when she had a sale, oh goodness gracious, two or three years ago, and I really do like it. Um, I really like that bulky cable look. I don't have anything like that. And I think um, this might be a present for me. Just because I don't know who else would really be in love with this look other than me. And it's the end of June, the last two weeks of June. So I anticipate starting this really around 4th of July time. And what better way to celebrate 4th of July than to knit with red yarn. So this yarn, which is just fantastic, is by the Little Red Bicycle, and I do not think that she is dying anymore. And it's her Penny Farthing Sport in the colorway Vixen. It's 80% merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon, and it's 250 yards per skein. So it is it is a true uh, sport weight, and so I can knit the middle size of the dunes with 500 yards. I will have some left over, but it should be a pretty good size um, shawl. The shawl in this picture right here is the small size, I believe. So, and that is, it looks, well, I guess you can't really tell. That is actually on a child. That's not an adult. So the medium should be pretty large. I mean, it should be big, I think. And so that's really, really exciting to me. Um, I love large shawls. I didn't used to, you know. I used to like the little ones, but now I'm all in to wrap me up in warmy goodness. Just wool. Just wrap me in wool, and I'd be happy. So that's what's next on the needles. Um... What else have I been doing? So, um, I have not been working, as we all know. And so, I have been trying to take some creative time and discover some things that I would like. So, I, several months ago, placed an order at Knit Picks and got their bare uh, skeins, which is undyed uh, skeins. And I got two that were silk and merino and so this week I dyed them up and I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with how they came out so I dyed two different colorways this one is like a red black a little bit almost coming out a little red purple for you but those dark sections really aren't purple they're more burgundy so that's one skein and then the second skein I dyed is like a silver so what I have decided is that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use these together and I'm going to probably, I'll probably knit a shawl, let's be honest, or I'm, I'm really fascinated by the possibility of color work with these two. I think that it would come out looking really well. So dying, that was really fun. I, I liked it a lot. Um, it was a little bit stressful. 
I'm kind of a control freak. And I'm one of these people that's like all into something or all out of something. And it was really hard to give up some control because I mix you. Okay, so you mix the dye. And I, I, I watched countless videos. I've read books. I've been researching dyeing for probably about six months to see if I would like to do it. <clears throat> And what it involved in everything. So, of course, me, I, I totally watched a million podcasts, I YouTube videos, books. I talked to dyers and tried to find out what they recommended me do. And they're like, you just need to do it. Like one lady goes, what do you mean you like want to take a class? And I'm like, I need to take a class or something before I do this for the first time. I just jumped into knitting, learned from a book. And although I really loved it in the beginning, like there was a steep learning curve and I spent a lot of money on dyes and I bought a special pot and I got this bare yarn, you know, I don't want to mess it up. And she's like, you just really need to let go a little bit and do it. <laughs> so I did. Um, and I really liked the results. In a way, it was so much fun. With knitting, you have so much control, right? Um, if I don't like a stitch or I don't like something on a pair of needles or a size, I can just rip it out and redo it. What was fun about dyeing is that I mix the colors together and I put it in a pot and it's kind of like, well, we'll see if it comes out. And it was fun to like anticipate and try to, I don't want to say beat the system, but like try to get what I had in my head on the actual yarn. It didn't always work. Um, but I really, really liked the process, and it was tons of fun. I don't really feel as though I'm a creative person all the time, where my family would say that I'm uber creative, um, you know, with my knitting and everything. For me, that's like pairing. I'm like taking somebody's yarn, and I'm pairing it with a pattern, and then I'm basically like a workhorse to get the finished product. To me, I'm only semi-creative. It just means that I have a good eye, right? And they're like, oh, no, you're creative. And so I guess I'm kind of trying to push myself to see, you know, where I am creative and what I can do with things. So I dyed these up, and um, I really like them, and I'm happy with them. And they smell like wool goodness. You know me. I love to smell my yarn. So that's, that's that, and uh, they're exactly what I was going for. So it was a success. All right, the next thing I have gotten, and I have been enabled, people, enabling. So um, the Fat Squirrel Speaks has a bag update about twice a month. Um, <clears throat> she sells three different size bags, um, a sock bag, a medium bag, and a sweater bag. They are all wedge style bags um, with zippers. And she does no repeat of fabrics. So once she puts them up and until they're gone, she doesn't ever sew that again. Um, in this case, this week she had a pre-order, but I actually was able to get on, on the ones that were already done. And so I already received my bag. So I ordered a sweater bag. And this is what I got. It's huge. Look how big it is. It totally could fit a sweater for me, no problem. So I got the pink, and this fabric is trees, and then there's a little girl, if you can see. And on each side, I do have a little, a little girl. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but do you see how there's, like, right here, there's, like, that yellow spot? That is actually a, lightning, a light bug. It's so cute. So the things I really like about her bags are um, they're they're very large, and this does even without yarn in it. If I open up the bottom, sit flat bottomed. She's got a YKK zipper, and I don't know if you guys know a lot about um, sewing. I know a lot. I don't shouldn't say a lot. I don't personally sew, so I have limited knowledge. But my mom sews, my grandma's all sewed. And my sister is a really big sewer. And so I know enough to know the brands. YKK is a really good zipper brand. Um, and so that's really nice. Um, on the inside of the bags, it is canvas. Um, the only thing that is a little annoying for my perfectionist self 
is that this canvas color is very cream and this um, print is very stark white. Also, the zipper is stark white, which matches this, but if you turn it on the inside and you look, you can see how cream that is compared to the white, white zipper. So, I don't sew, so I can't say if I sewed this, this is what I would do. Um, personally, it's not a huge gamut for me. Like, it's not something so much, obviously, I still bought it, and I did know that. Um, that she always uses cream canvas on the inside. But like if my sister saw this bag as a sewer, she would be like, that's going to bother the bejeebus out of me. But my six, my, if I'm a perfectionist, my sister, I don't even know what to call her because she would, she would never do that. She would, she rips out anything that's wrong, um, which is good in some ways and bad in other ways. It kind of some kind of takes a long time to finish project if you keep on ripping stuff out. Um, and then I got a lavender slatchlet, which um, she does put in most bags. So the Fat Squirrel um, is a great bag maker, and I obviously I bought it from her. I love this stuff. But if you bought from her in the beginning when maybe she wasn't as prolific, the, there are some things that have changed on the bag since she started really sewing heavily. The lavender satchelet is one. In her beginning bags, and I have several of her, her first bags, like this bag is one of the first bags she did. There's a few things that are different. The first is, is that this is in a bag with a tie in the top, and I don't even know if I can get that undone. She ties it quite firmly. However, it is lavender seeds, and they do fall out. So they're about, I don't even know if I can show you. They're about that big. See, they're just tiny things. And with these uh, satchlets, they fall out. So that's one thing to know about. She used to actually sew um, satchlets that were completely sealed, but she stopped doing that. Uh, and I don't know when she stopped doing, doing that, um, but I know her earliest bags did have like a coordinating fabric satchel inside, and these do not anymore. You are getting more lavender, like there's more lavender in this one than you used to be in the satchelets, at least by feel, is what I observed, but hey, you still get a satchelet, and it still smells lavender and great. If you're allergic to lavender, she does have an option for you to select that a satchelet won't be inside. The second thing is that um, she got, I, shouldn't, I don't know if it's really a new tag, but she started putting tags on, which she didn't used to do that. It's a nice suede uh, tag, and it's it's great. Like, I have no complaints about that. It's firmly um, cemented in, and I really, really like it. I would prefer a tag like this to a loop. Do I have one with a loop? Man, I look really unprepared. I believe I do. Yeah. See, these have loops. Most people, this is the Girl K bags. So most people, you have a loop and it helps me open it. I do really like that. Um, if you do not have anything on your zipper, I do like the loop. But if I had a choice, I like the tag as well. This, she has the handle, which I want to say she's one of the first people, if not the first person, to do the handle. And it is on a nice swivel. And she's always had that. Um, and it's somewhat coordinating. Um, like on this bag of the Fat Squirrel, it doesn't have the tag on the side. However, it does have a nice YKK zipper. And um, she matched the swivel clasp to a brown to better match the fabric. So I know that's really nice as well. She does take thought. But I will tell you, this is her sweater size. And this is her medium size. So if you could, her sweater size is much, much larger than her medium size bag. <clears throat> her sock bag, I have never seen it. However, it does look like a one scanner bag. I never buy those because I'm almost never knitting one skein projects. I'm not a sock knitter. Um, unfortunately, I really wish I was. I've tried it a few times and they've ended in disasters. Or like three months to knit a sock. 
So I don't really use one skein bags. Um, and so I can't comment, but they are, I know for a fact, smaller than the medium size bag itself. So I got that. It was super exciting. I haven't bought a bag in a really long time. Um, and that has been pretty wonderful. I, I would say I got, my mom made me some bags and I knew she was making them. So they, it totally helped me not buy bags, right? Because I knew I had some coming. But now that I received them, I bought that one because I love bags. I love containers. I'm not very organized. should be more organized due to my love of containers, but I just like them. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I just like the containers. So we'll get into the last thing of knitting and then we'll get into rants and raves a little bit. So my rants, my other thing is that I'm going to do a giveaway. So I found this among my items. I don't know how I got it, where it came from, who gave it to me, um, but it's crochet. I believe it's crochet fantasy. Pretty sure. I can't see on this thing. Let's see. Oh, yes, crochet fantasy. And it's in August 2002. This is right after I moved to Oregon. Like, like seriously, like only a few months after I moved to Oregon. I don't know how. I, I, don't, I just have no idea how I got it. So, and I don't even know if they're making this anymore. I've never crocheted. Um, I've tried a few times and I'm dismal. Although I keep on hoping that I'll pick it up. Um, it is full of good, good projects. So let's look at a few projects, shall we? Um, my God, it just looks so complicated. I'm sure when I look at crochet, it's like people who don't knit and they're like, oh, that looks so complicated. And you're like, it's really not. Okay, so there is a floral summer afghan, which I do really think is pretty. Isn't that pretty? Then there is a seashell. I don't know what that is. I guess you could make, like if it was me, I would probably make like a dishcloth like that. Because that's what I would use. It could be, it's a hot pad. Nice. Summer purse. I would see, I would make that for my kids. Circle of pansies. It has a few of these doilies in it. They're all pretty nice. And the outer rim of that really does look like pansies. A flower pot cozy. Can you knit a cozy for anything? Like, really, I, I seriously think you could knit a cozy for almost anything. The butterfly in blooms. Look at that. That is really cute, actually. could make it for a table runner. See, but see, I look at that, and I think that's got to be a lot of work. Because you got to crochet the, um, the white part, and then all of that other stuff is appliqued on top of it, crocheted and then attached. And then we get into the, the 4th of July stuff. You have Uncle Sam doll, which is really cute for a little kid. That's darling. And then you have the Patriotic Doily, which again, super nice. And then Backyard Bliss. And again, man, that looks complicated to me. Huh. Sorry, it was cute plan words. Home, tweet home. There is a lot of patterns in this. And roses for mom. So that's not all the patterns. That is about eight patterns, and there's 18 in here. Um, and the other patterns are sweater patterns. Some stuff that is unshapely. There's doll patterns in here. 
See, now my daughter would love me to crochet that for her, for her Barbies. And if that wasn't enough, not only do you get the bride and the groom, but wait, the whole wedding party. That is really cute. Seriously, that's so cute. My daughter would love that. Oh, you even get to make them hats. Seriously, that's hours of fun right there. So, it's great. Even the articles are kind of fun to read of what was in 12 years ago. Oh, no. Yeah, 12 years ago. Wow. Seems like a lifetime ago. Like, there's an article, then and now, knitting or crocheting on the beach. Look at her. She looks so gorgeous. That woman on the beach. I wish I looked that good on the beach. Let's all be honest. Eyes don't look that good on the beach. Uh, but it, it's really kind of interesting. It's kind of a novelty item almost to me. Although if I could crochet, I probably would crochet the whole wedding party because that is awesome. So I'm going to give this away. Um, what I'll do is in the thread for episode 33, be a member of the group and leave a comment on what you would knit out of this fantastic book. And we'll go ahead and draw a random number uh, next week and send it out to you, whoever wins it. If no one wants it, no one comments then. I'll just have to keep it for nostalgia. Like there's a part of me that just can't throw it away. It has something to do with fiber arts, and then I think it doesn't deserve to go to the landfill. And so I would just probably keep it forever and never use it. And it deserves to be used. And it's their 20th anniversary issue, people. That's awesome. Okay, so all the knitting I have that this week, um, or anything fiber related. So we'll get into rants and raves this week. Uh, just crazy stuff. Crazy. Um, I took my daughter out of daycare because uh, I'm not working. And that's been a few weeks. I did it uh, in June. So the end of May. Uh, I took her out. I think she only went two weeks in May. So it's been over a month of having my daughter full time. And I haven't had my daughter full time uh, since she was a baby. A lot changes. A lot. Um, I find it extremely difficult to keep her entertained. I know why people let their children watch TV all the time or be on an iPad all the time. Like, it's super easy. I can do everything I need to do and not worry about it. I'm struggling with finding activities. So this week she went to a camp for two hours a day, and that seemed really, really nice. I got the comment that she was the best behaved in her group, so that was good. She raised her hand. She asked if she could have things, she used her please and thank you, and that was really, really nice. So um, it really helped spur her and say, I want to go to school. So that was good, um, and it was really nicely ran. They they did crafts every day, and they played outside, and it was just two hours. So that was wonderful, but now next week I'm back to reality of full time. There's almost, only so much Play-Doh that you can play before you want to hurt somebody. And I'm not, like, structural, like, at all. Like, my husband is totally that person that can see a lump of clay and be like, we're going to build a tower, and it's going to be the best tower in the whole world. And I'm like, I see a lump of clay, and I'm like, there's a lump of clay. I could roll it into a ball so it's symmetrical. That's about it. Like, I'm just not that way. Um, and so that's been getting a little, a little much. And I think she's getting frustrated with me. You know, we are having play dates and some other things and going swimming because it's summer and she's really liking that. So I think I just need to expand my horizons a little bit and try to figure out the best way to do things. Um, and I'm trying to incorporate a lot of learning in every single day. Um, cause number one, I don't want her to fall behind. Uh, before she gets into kindergarten, and second, um, I am fearful. <laughs> to put it mildly, uh, I 
I'm excited for her to go to kindergarten. She is ready for it. We've prepared for it heavily. Uh, but I want it to be a balance where she is learning new things, but the social aspect and the relationship aspect with her, with her peers, is going to be difficult for her. And so it's like, do you want school to be super difficult learning wise and difficult on the whole social peer wise? And so there's nothing I can do on the social peer. Like I have play dates. She knows how to talk to other kids. Um, I just think when she gets into a group of 32, you know, she's going to be picked on. Every kid gets picked on. I got picked on. Everybody gets picked on. And uh, she's not... I don't know how she's going to react to certain social situations that are extremely difficult to navigate. And so before I had a kid for ASD, I never really understood what that means. But us as a society in America have very unique uh, customs and rituals. And I never really viewed them as that way because I grew up with them and I just understand them. And then every country has its specific rituals that you do. So the best way that it was ever explained to me is think about a birthday party. We have a lot of birthday parties. Um, we go to birthday parties, it seems like, all the time for kids. And, you know, you go in and you get to have a party and you get to play. You don't get presents. Somebody else gets presents. And you need to be happy for them that they're getting presents. There's a cake, but you don't get to blow out the candles, even though you want to blow out the candles. And you don't get the first piece. You know what I mean? There's all this stuff where you have to wait and or you don't get something but then you can't be upset about that in our society you have to be happy for the person who's getting those things and as a as a child that's socially delayed a lot of times it doesn't make any sense to her I mean birthday parties are now fine we've gone to enough of them where she's just happy to be there and playing with the kids and she understands the presents aren't hers and she can't open them and she's fine I mean, the first few, you really had to explain to your kid, and I'm sure every kid, you know, that, no, you don't get to open up those. But it's those kinds of social rituals that give me anxiety on her behalf. And, you know, I don't know what school's going to be like, and I know it's got to be vastly different. One, because I never went to school in Oregon, so I don't even know what they do. And... I mean, I know they do schoolwork, but they probably are going to do regionally specific special things. And two, obviously haven't gone to kindergarten in a really long time. Now, I can remember going to kindergarten. I can remember kindergarten roundup, going to see where, you know how advanced I was and getting tested. I can remember my first day of kindergarten. I can remember who dropped me off. I can remember the first time I got to go on the playground. I mean, I have a good memory. I can remember all of these things that happened to me. And so... I want them to be happy memories and so to alleviate some of my anxiety about that whole situation that I have absolutely no control over I kind of switched now to trying to prepare her as best as I can academically so at least um, she should still be challenged but at the same time not be behind I don't know if that really helps so I just need to figure out more things that I can do um, and that take, you know, preparation but aren't a complete disaster. My house is tiny, people, tiny. And I'm not complaining about that. I have a small house for a reason. I don't think that I need more space. I don't demand more space. Um, it's easy to keep clean and it's the price is right. So I'm not going to move anytime soon unless it's to a situation that is, for some list of reasons, not just one reason, is a better situation. And so I don't want something that takes up a ton of room or is a complete and utter mess. Like, I don't want that. That's so not me. I might have to let go of that a little bit and try to figure out some things. And there's only so many cookies I can cook because I'm going to get fat, y'all. Watch, that's going to be the screenshot. <laughs> It's going to be a screenshot that YouTube or Vimo, I'm just going to be like huge. All right. So that's it. I'm just continually dwindling talking and you guys don't need that. So I'll talk to you all later and I hope you have a wonderful week full of some time for you and some knitting time for all. Um, knit with love, you guys. See you next week.